and this is New Source Today. Just after 5.30, good morning everybody. Friday is here, this is New Source Today. I'm Joel Porter. And I'm Lindsay Riley. In New Mexico, the problem isn't fire, it's water. Too much of it. Right now, zoo employees don't know how they died. The zoo staff is said to be very upset by the deaths of the cotton-topped tamarins. The FDA is cracking down on tanning beds. In Oregon, a new law went into effect in January, banning kids under the age of 18 from using tanning beds. Eggs of smelly garbage, dirty clothes, even human waste. That was home for two girls ages 7 and 12. They lived there for two years. People in their Beaverton neighborhood neighborhood had no idea. They saw a camper sitting there with a family living in it, but they didn't know about the filthy conditions inside. Police say 22 year old Elliot Roger left behind a manifesto that indicates he had been planning the attack for years. The killings began on Friday night with three people who were stabbed to death at Rogers apartment building in Isla Vista. NBC will test out a new comedy and see if it fits in its Thursday night lineup tonight. Undateable is about the struggles of finding a relationship and some of the pitfalls these characters run into. Oh, I remember reading Rainbow very well. Yep, remember that old line he always said, but don't take my word for yeah. it. Read it for yourself. There you go. But the collection at the Evergreen Aviation Museum is still growing. They recently added a DC-9 from the President's Air Force One fleet, and you may recognize this C-47A behind me. Now, there were around 100 crabs that were numbered and tagged and released into Winchester Bay. If you find a crab with a number tag, it could be worth $1,000. As you keep adding more and more compost to your tower, watering will become an issue. That's why I've added some PVC pipe with holes drilled in it that will allow you to water all the way to the root. <laughs> all right, well, as your flower bed and garden starts to green up, you'll need to pay closer attention to weeds. This week in the garden, we'll talk about some ways to tackle some of those fast growing weeds. Randy Rogers' hands are covered for tackling invasive backyard blackberries with some heavy-duty gloves. They're designed for working around saws and sharp blades. They're Kevlar. Rogers wears a pair of Hestra gloves that he says are puncture-proof against the blackberry thorns. But on the new ones that are coming in, you get down right there on the ground and just pull nice and slow and just yank them out by the roots. But not all backyard weeds are dealt with so easily. They're shallow weeds that are really easy to pull, and then there's deep-rooted ones like dandelion, where if you break off that root, then you, you just get regrowth. One weed that really likes to stick around is called catchweed bed straw. You may have noticed some of it growing in your garden or flower bed. It's an annoying weed with an interesting bit of trivia attached to it. Catchweed bed straw came over with the settlers on the covered wagons. Uh, they would stuff gunny sacks with it and uh, that would serve as a pillow and when it got all matted down and broken up inside the gunny sack they'd dump it out uh, along the side of the trail and and if there was more growing there they'd stuff it again and move it on down to the till it ran out again. Eventually after a few years of that it moved its way west and here it is in Oregon. Okay. Choate says you can try spraying uh, the weeds using a colored dye to show you where in your yard you've eradicated. It's a natural tendency is, ah, I can't remember if I sprayed that or not, so I'll just hit it again just in case. Um, that dye indicator makes it real easy to know which ones you've hit and which ones you haven't. Choate says you can also try a propane torch, which will burn the weed's leaves and gradually starve the root. You can find the Hester gloves on sale at Gray's Garden Center. As for that catchweed bed straw, they say you won't need to wear heavy-duty gloves if you're pulling it out, unless your skin is highly sensitive to the weed. Of course, you don't have to venture far from Eugene to find lush greens and some fine wine. And if you haven't heard about Monroe through the grapevine, that's where we're headed in this week's All in a Day's Drive. The drive on Territorial Road may feel remote, but it's on this spot near Monroe where 15 years ago, Jeff Doyle and his brother Greg set to work building an 18-hole golf course. It's enough away from town, but yet, uh, but yet still close enough that the drive's not that bad. A bad drive at Diamond Woods can land you in trouble. Ah, too much grass. But you're only a good sandblast away from saving par. No, I didn't. Ah! <laughs> now, I'll tell you what, that is a cut. The fairways make it difficult enough to the point where you're not playing the same shot every time you come out and play this course. The big slope is pretty pretty predominant, so you might be looking at a green thinking it's level, but it'll always break a little more. We call it the territorial road effect because that's the furthest west of the property. After 15 years, the Doyles aren't content to sit and relax. They admit they have to think about what that word means. Okay, the R-E-L-A-X, okay, it's a five-letter word. We don't relax.
well, we, you know, I, w I w don't want to say we don't relax. I think it's relaxing for both of them to think about new things to do. Uh, we only, at this point, keep trying to make it just a little bit nicer. The Doyles have since built a four-bedroom lodge that they rent out to everyone, from visiting golfers to wedding parties. Once they get out here and see the views, and they get out here, and again, the gentlemen that are usually with them, that come with them, are all about, oh, you get golf? Okay, that works. The Doyle brothers aren't the only ones to put down roots near Monroe. Several of their neighbors have done just that, literally putting down roots, because the Willamette Valley isn't just golfing country, it's also wine country. It's, we are in the rain shadow of the highest part of the coast range between Green Peak and Mary's Peak, so the only part of the coast range that's over 5,000 or 4,000 feet. And so we have a little microclimate here that is just producing some outstanding wines. Phil and Nancy aren't ones to relax either. And that brings the vines up. And the former educators have spent nearly a decade as students quickly learning how to bottle award-winning wine on 15 acres. And for us to think about just retiring and then, you know, sitting and looking at each other and saying, now what, just didn't seem to fit. But the McCollums have fit in nicely with their neighboring vineyards. There are around seven wineries within a few miles of Monroe. It makes it more of a destination. People think about, you know, traveling into through a, an area for wine tasting, for example. We open at noon and, and people start coming in about 11.30. Phil says after bud break, his soon-to-be flowering grapes are off to an early start. What he predicts will be a good growing season. And you can swing away or sit and sip, and it's all in a day's drive. Diamond Woods currently offers a family fun night. That's when a group of four can come out and play starting at 4 o'clock with a tee time for just $25, so long as one of the players is junior age, that's under 18.